In this video, I'll continue talking about commonly used functions, global and local variables, and also how to hook up sensors to the Arduino. Digital read and analog read are functions that are used to read input from the sensors or buttons. The only parameters these two functions take is the pin number you want to read the input from. Digital read is used if you just want to read if your pin has any current going into it. I'm going to be using a button on pin 3 to turn off and on a light on pin 13. In order to do this, I need to use some if statements. An if statement just checks if a condition is true. If it is, it executes what you put in the curly braces underneath it. It is read like this. If digital read on pin 3 reads as high, then the digital write on pin 13 will be high at 5 volts. I use the double equal sign to indicate if one value is equivalent to the other. This is different than putting one equal sign, which tells the Arduino to set one value to the other. Now I need to tell the Arduino under what condition should the light be turning off. I can say this by writing an else statement. This means that if none of my conditions are true, it will run whatever is in the else statement by default. Because we are starting to write longer codes with more things happening, it would probably be a good idea to keep track of these numbers. You can do this with something called global variables. So now, it is not only easier to see what is going on in your sketch, but if you need to change a pin, I can just change the number of the global variable. I can also make my code easier to read by breaking the code up into parts. This is called a local variable. I cannot use the variable button anywhere else but in void loop. As you saw earlier, I had to indicate what type of variable switch pin and LED pin were going to be by putting an int in front of the variable. This is what I did with the variable button, but instead of the variable being an integer, it is a boolean. A boolean just signifies how the variable button should be stored in the computer's memory. Booleans take up less space than indicating the button variable as an int, since the only value a boolean can be is 1 or 0, high or low, on or off. I indicated the button variable as a boolean, since digital read is only storing two possible integers, 1 and 0. So as you can see from my circuit right here, I have a LED on the board. It's on pin 13 connecting to ground. The reason why I can put it in the board like this is because there's already a built-in res resistor on the board in pin 13. So I'm not at risk at blowing out my LED by uh, putting the LED on the board directly. I have 5 volts in this red wire and I have ground in the black wire. The ground is on this blue strip right here. The red uh, wire, which is 5 volts, is going to the button first. And then over here you can see we have a couple things going on. We have a resistor and we have the yellow wire. The yellow wire is going to pin 3, but the resistor is going to ground. The reason why I need a resistor going to ground is because there is electrical interference in the air right now. There's always electrical interference. So I need to pull that electrical interference to ground. If I don't put this resistor right here, my pin 3 will see, re receive mixed values and it will go on or off um, just based on the electrical interference in the air. So in order to have the most control, we need to have a pull down resistor that pulls down the electrical interference so it won't interfere with, uh, with our LED. So if I push the button, you can see the LED goes on. If I let it go, it turns off. Analog read is used if you have a sensor that offers a variety of values other than just 0 or 1 like a button. I'm going to be using a potentiometer as a sensor for my board. A potentiometer is just a resistor, but instead of being a fixed value like 220 ohms, you can vary its resistance. Whenever you want to extract data from a sensor, you need to be putting current through the sensor to carry the values to your board. The potentiometer I'm going to be using has three pins. One for ground, one for power, and one to receive data. The one for uh, power and the one for ground, it doesn't matter which uh, pin you have connected to power and ground, uh, just as long as on the, they're on the outside terminals. When you're going to be using sensors that will be varying its data, like a potentiometer or a pressure sensor, you need to use special pins to receive those values. Those values are located on the other side of the board, labeled A0 to A5. The A's stand for analog. I'm going to be using the pin A0 to receive my potentiometer data.
Notice how I put pin 14 instead of A0? That is because the board left off on pin 13 on the other side. I want to read the data on pin 14, so I will use the function analog read 14. This is all I need to do to read the values on A0, but if I wanted to see those values, I need to bring up the serial monitor. In order to see the serial monitor, I need to use a new library called serial. To indicate that you will be using the serial monitor, you need to put serial.begin in void setup. You write the dot to signify that you're going to be using the function begin inside the serial library. This is known as object-oriented programming. You put serial.begin in void setup because you want to tell the Arduino only once that you will be using the serial monitor. The 9600 indicates the speed at which the computer communicates with the Arduino in bits per second. Now that I've told the Arduino that I'm going to be using the serial monitor, I want to print the sensor data to the screen. I can do this by putting serial.println inside the void loop function. The ln part of print tells the Arduino to put a carriage return after every time it loops through the void loop. If I didn't put ln, I would be printing the data horizontally. Once I run the sketch, I can push this button to see the serial monitor. After pushing run and the serial monitor button, you can see that the serial monitor pops up with the values of the potentiometer. As I turn the potentiometer, the values will rise all the way up to 1023. The red wire is 5 volts, the black is ground, and the ye yellow wire is my data wire, which is going into pin A0. It's important to note that the reason why the sensor only goes up to 1023 is because the analog pins only receive 10 bits of data. This is important to know because when you want to control something on a pulse width modulation pin, those can only output 8 bits of data. So you need to be able to map 1023 to 255. There are certain functions that you can use to do this. I'll be showing them in a later video. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to use the functions you have in your toolkit in a more advanced way. The next video will involve using different kinds of loops and some useful functions for manipulating incoming data. The next video should start to wrap things up and start making more sense.